Hi there, I'm Michael Posnick with Century 21 Northumberland in Summerside, Canada. Uh, today, we're going to talk about something called Island Regulatory Appeals Commission, otherwise known as IRAC. And the question at hand is, can you, as an off-islander, buy waterfront real estate or large pieces of land in PEI? But before we do that, um, I want you to take the time to visit my website, which is at michaelshomes.com, and make sure you join the mailing list. And another website you may wish to check out is sunburycove.com, S-U-N-B-U-R-Y-C-O-V-E.com. So we have 10 minutes on YouTube to discuss a very complex uh, question, but the, you know, the bottom line is there's a lot of rumors floating around, mainly uh, propagated by Nova Scotia, New Brunswick real estate agents, that would have you believe that you cannot buy uh, real estate in PEI, particularly uh, waterfront real estate and large acreage. That in fact is absolute nonsense. Um, however, there is a little bit of truth to it, but it's greatly exaggerated uh, so that people don't buy in PEI and they go to other provinces. I urge those people that are looking in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, to come to PEI last after you've combed both provinces and you will find uh, that PEI is the place to be for its scenery, its waterfront, its beaches, everything else. Anyway, Island Regulatory Appeals Commission, IRAC. Basically, what happened early in the 70s is there was uh, some particular large corporations and uh, groups of individuals that were buying up massive and copious quantities of land in PEI. And there's also some concern that that land, or the, the regulation on land in PEI wasn't really as neat and tidy as it needed to be. In other words, there is no official planning zone. Someone could have a, a house and a cottage and next door someone could build a nuclear power plant. There is no official planning zones for cottages or businesses or anything outside uh, Summerside and Charlottetown. So in 1972, I believe, and you can confirm all these facts because I'm just going by memory with my experience in dealing you know, with nothing but waterfront real estate for the last 13 years. Um, in the early 70s, IRAC was formed to not only regulate uh, land, but also milk prices, oil prices, rent, landlord tenant act, and for, or, uh, you know, laws and bylaws. But we're going to discuss land. All this information can be found on the very exciting and invigorating irac.pe.ca site. Uh, and there's some other specialized links that are kind of hard to find on the site, so if you uh, call me we can discuss those as well. There is one link that will actually allow you to check uh, the status of any piece of land on the island, and I'll get to that here in a minute. But basically what IRAC was supposed to do is it was supposed to put a freeze or make it more difficult for corporations and off-island non-resident individuals to buy mainly waterfront property. Uh, so they gave themselves 10 years to sort of redesign the regulations. A report was done in the 70s. There was another report done in the 90s. And then there's another report done in 2010 or the last quarter of 2009, which you can find on the internet uh, or you can email or talk to me. I'll give you the link. Uh, it was uh, the last study was done by uh, Judge Ralph Thompson, retired Judge Ralph Thompson, and it can be found on the, uh, the internet as well, probably at gov.pe.ca. So anyway, the 70s, they are given 10 years to get their act together. And big surprise, I just can't believe it, but they didn't. Uh, after spending all that time, having 10 years to do so, having a report drawn up, probably a huge dollars at taxpayers' expense, nothing happened. Did it again in the 90s, nothing happened. Did it again in 2010, hey, I know you're not going to believe this, but nothing happened. And probably will never happen, because it's politically unpopular to make these sort of decisions. And you know politicians, they're in the game of popularity. Otherwise, they won't get voted into their nice, cushy jobs once again. So no one wants to really make that decision. Anyway, what IRAC does to you as a purchaser, when you're buying five acres of land or 165 feet of what's deemed to be water frontage, you have to go through IRAC and there's an application process and you pay a 1% fee. So if the value is 100000 you would pay a $1,000 fee to make your application to IRAC and they would either allow or disallow the purchase. IRAC allegedly is supposed to operate at arm's distance from the government, but we all know, hint, hint, it isn't. 
Uh, so it's very important when you make your application, and this is the big tip here, that you do have proper legal representation. Because if you're using a family lawyer that's never done an IRAC application or a lawyer that specializes in criminal law, it's probably not going to get accepted. You need to find yourself a really good lawyer that has IRAC experience, deals with real estate and land, and the whole uh, IRAC appeal process or application process. It's your lucky day. I just happen to have those lawyers and I can certainly pass that information along to you and they can make sure that uh, you'll have a successful journey with IRAC so you can go out and buy whatever you want for the most part. In um, 13 years I have a hundred percent success rate. Uh, I've only had uh, the only time I've ever had rejections has been either the applications were purposely uh, flawed because they wanted to get out of the contract or they were asking for something that just wasn't going to happen. Uh, going into the process, they knew that. Um, but in 13 years, I probably only had two or three applications that had been rejected. One thing that they will reject an application for is if the property hasn't been on uh, MLS, uh, the multiple listing service, for 90 days, the last I heard. Now, getting back to the 165 or 5 acres, if there's two names on the deed, let's say a husband and wife, you can now multiply that and you have an exemption. So under 320 feet or 10 acres, you don't have to go through IRAC. Multiply that by three, four, sometimes I've even seen eight and nine names go on to a deed to get around IRAC. And that's perfectly legal and that's within the, within the rules. So it's 156 feet, five acres per name on the deed at point of conveyance. So that's how that works. It's not an issue. Go buy real estate in PEI. There, there are a number of other things to look at, but there's no way I'm going to cover everything in less than 10 minutes. Uh, one of the things you can do is if you're looking at a parcel, every parcel of land, every house has a, a PID or property identification number that's usually four or anywhere from, I guess, four to seven digits. And then it's usually dash zero, zero, zero. You take those first digits ignoring the dash 000 99% of the time. You can go to irac.pe.ca, you can type in that PID number, that will tell you the status of the property and the history of it and if there's been any applications. One thing you have to watch out for with IRAC is they really, really like to identify properties for non-development. This is where the politicians, primarily the premier, has to step in and say this is utterly ridiculous, it's stupid, it's protectionist, it does nothing for PEI because it's skated all the time. But basically it says um, someone has bought that property and one of the conditions was they can't develop it uh, typically for uh, 10 plus 1 years which is even more, there's more regulation there. If you buy a property, it's identified, you can make an application to have the identification removed. It's removed in what they call legally 10 plus one years, or as you and I would probably put it, 11 years. And it's removed, the application is free. But if you are buying a piece of property that shows as identified on the IRAC site, or shows as identified when the lawyer does a title search, it will be more costly and sometimes impossible to have that uh, identification removed. Um, so basically um, you, you're looking for a piece of land that isn't identified, especially if you're going to develop it. If you're just going to build a single house or, or a cottage in a house, probably not a big deal. You got one minute left here. Uh, that should pretty well cover it. Uh, just trying to cover, you know, 99% of the questions I've had over the last 13 years in regards to IRAC. Bottom line is, yes, you can buy property here. Uh, if you are developing it, you do want to do some research. Biggest tip of this whole video is you need proper legal representation because it does make a difference. Even though IRAC has absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with the government, it's still helpful to have a lawyer that has government contacts, if you know what I mean. And if anyone can prove me wrong, call me. Uh, but I've seen it in works uh, with the, past two the current and the past administration. Um, so that's the bottom line. So uh, give me a call if you're looking for waterfront. That's what I specialize in. Again, go to michaelshomes.com. Add yourself to the mailing list and receive all kinds of hot, useful information, tips, tricks, and traps that you're going to get nowhere else. Have a great day.